There is a kind of companionship that people learn to appreciate throughout their lifetime. Young girls carefully pick up needles and threads and turn them into clothes. When they become mothers, they pass on the craft to their children and the tradition is continued. This is a tradition of Chinese needlecraft. A woman's creativity is soft but enduring. Their hands seem to never stop in their quest to forge better lives. The craft has traveled from ancient times to the ordinary families of today. They are passed on from generation to generation and demonstrate women's ingenuity. In the Uyghur language, Mingbulak means a place with a thousand springs. It's a small village in Xinjiang, northwest China. Villager Paradamu is making yarn from her family's wool. The wool is used to weave a kind of cloth called palazzi, which has a history of 4,000 years. It is a warm, durable and fadeless fabric woven with colored wool. It is one of the most common items in a Uyghur household. It can be used to make clothes, blankets, cushions and wall decorations. This old piece of palazzi belongs to Paradamu's family. It was handed down from her grandmother's grandmother and has been treasured by the family for over 100 years. Early in the morning, Paridamu goes out to look for a special plant. Palazzi is dyed using only natural pigments. After repeated boiling and soaking, the natural pigment is separated from the roots of wild sea buckthorn trees. The transparent yellow color it produces is Paradamu's favorite. She uses it to dye the wool. The quality of palazzi is determined by the pigments and how deeply it is dyed. For Paradamu, this quality is something she's extremely proud of. Everything has been prepared. It's time to weave the palazzi. This pile of wood in Paradamu's hand is all that is needed to make a palazzi weaving loom. Unlike other looms, it does not use a fixed stand and is made up only of a few pieces of wood. The components can be stored away when the loom isn't needed. The warp is fixed at both ends, while the weft is woven across the warp with this shuttle. Due to the loom's limited width, the width of the palazzi cloth is also fixed. However, its length can exceed 10 meters as long as the warp is long enough. The main features of Palazzi are its simple lines and geometric patterns. It is probably the oldest fabric still in use in China. A Palazzi weaver needs to be very patient. Female weavers work hard to support their families and through their work, this simple and practical craftsmanship has been handed down from generation to generation.
embroidery, sewing, weaving and textile dyeing. These skills have been traditionally practiced by women. They are collectively referred to as nugong, which means feminine craft in Chinese. Like many traditional Chinese crafts, it has quietly nurtured the society, enriched the culture and people's lives. Even today, marks left by this ancient craft can still be seen on special occasions. It's the seventh day of the seventh lunar month. People are preparing for the double seventh festival at the ancestral hall of the Luo clan. Of all the Chinese traditional festivals, this is the only one that has women at its center. On this day, the clan's female members will make a piece of handicraft as a tribute to the goddess Weaver Girl, as their ancestors did. Throughout history, Chinese women would pray to the goddess on this day for dexterity in handicraft, which at that time symbolized the traditional talents of a good spouse. Liang Guijin is a master of traditional Chinese handicraft. What she is making is locally known as Dao Hua, or rice flour. Grains are carefully glued together to make petals. The light yellow stamens in the middle are made of dyed grains. As the festival takes place at the end of the farming season in summer, making rice flowers is a way of praying for a good harvest. In a sense, you could say that this custom symbolizes the mutual dependence of men and women. While the menfolk plow the fields in which the grains grow, the women do the housework. These are common scenes from the Tang Dynasty. In early autumn, women rolled their sleeves up and worked in pairs, pounding fabric with wooden sticks. In ancient times, this was an important part of garment making. Back in those days, silk fabric takes on a hard texture just after it has been woven. It needs to be boiled, bleached and pounded on stone plates before it becomes soft enough for sewing. Tang Dynasty painter Zhang Xuan often depicts maids doing this kind of work, offering us a rare glimpse of an oft overlooked everyday activity that dominated the lives of countless women in ancient China. Embroidery is a necessary skill for Tajik women living on the Pamir Plateau. For them, embroidery is part of their daily chores and bit by bit, they help colouring their culture and society with threads and their skillful hands. Sunlight streams through the windows of traditional Tajik houses, providing the perfect lighting for their daily work. After breakfast, Tajik girl Rezvanguli goes to the living room with her unfinished embroidery piece. She learned embroidery from her mother at the age of 13 and has now become highly skilled at the art. She is practicing cross stitch which uses warp and weft to form crosses on cloth with crossed grids. This is one of the oldest methods of embroidery. For more than 1,000 years, embroidery was seen virtually everywhere on the clothes, objects and room decorations of the Tajik people it has become a part of their lives. Weddings are the most important time for Tajik women to show off their skills. 
brides celebrate the day by dressing in embroidered clothes handed down from generation to generation. The colourful hats they wear are also part of the traditional Tajik costume. Each hat's design is different as they are all handmade by different women. The wedding ceremony resembles a mobile embroidery museum. Even the wedding car is decorated with dazzling works of embroidery. The bride's wedding dress is the highlight of the ceremony. It demonstrates the outstanding skills of the embroiderers and is also an expression of their best wishes to the bride on her most magical day. After today, she will start her own family and become a wife and mother. Throughout history, Chinese women of different cultural backgrounds and ages have expressed their love for life with their hands. They use everything around them to make their lives more beautiful. In Shihe County, Gansu province, Ordinary maize leaves are turned into treasured objects in women's hands. After being boiled and aired, the leaves become soft and ductile. The local women braid them into cordage and weave them into beautiful and practical objects of different shapes. Women show their creativity and understanding of beauty in these works. These breathtakingly beautiful creations are a true reflection of their daily lives. This paper cutting work is called the Divine Columns. Legendary ancestors are depicted in the middle. On the left and right are the dragon and phoenix. The entire pattern symbolizes the prosperity of the family and shows an imaginative interpretation of ancient stories. These paper cuttings are the works of an ordinary woman. She doesn't need to make a pattern first. She simply picks up a pair of scissors and lets her imagination fly. <laughs> Paper cutting has a history of more than 1,000 years in China. In northern Shangxi, almost every girl starts learning it as a child. Originally, paper cutting was used in sample patterns for clothes and embroidery, but later evolved into a kind of folk custom and folk art. On weddings and funerals, people make paper cuttings of auspicious patterns. Red paper cuttings and cave dwellings have become unique features of the villages in northern Shangxi. Gao Feng Lian's paper cuttings are a reflection of the rural life in northern China. They are intricate depictions of farming methods and folk customs. Whatever she makes, whether it's a small decoration for a window or a larger piece of work, 
she gets started right away on the final version. No patterns or sketches for her. Using only her imagination and her understanding of life, images take form on her paper cuttings, giving her works a unique artistic value. These are the last images of Gao Fengliang, who is 80 years old at the time. Paper cutting was her medium of self-expression, miraculously creating vivid depictions of the world around her, everyday life, the ways and customs of countryside people, with just a few deft snips of her scissors. Her memory lives on through these incredible works. Over thousands of years, China's special environment and conditions have made Chinese women gentle, kind, strong and wise. Their works are inspired by ordinary life, while regional, ethnic and age differences give them diversity. Although some of the skills might not be essential for modern living, they still serve as a vessel for carrying emotions. And that's the reason why they are still alive and popular today on this land. <laughs> 69-year-old Li Guifeng is going to the market to buy a very special fabric. The Yao people call this fabric black cloth. Li Guifeng has come to buy this cloth to make suits for her grandsons. The color black symbolizes the land on which they live. Every pattern and method of embroidery is a result of the thousand year history of the Yao people. In addition to doing their daily chores, Yao women also have to make Tiao Hua, a type of cross stitch embroidery. No drafts or sketches are needed. The embroiderer only needs to look at the back of the fabric and cross stitches the patterns with the needle. It's an even more complicated method of embroidery and the patterns it creates are more intricate. When she doesn't have to graze the cattle, or when it rains, Li Guifeng uses the time to make Yao folk suits for her two grandsons. It takes about two years to make a Yao suit. Some people believe that it's not worth the effort and that young people probably won't appreciate it anyway. But Li Guifeng disagrees. Traditional Yao women see embroidery as being closely connected to life. Wearing handmade costumes means you are carrying your ancestors' blessings with you. This explains why Li Guifeng insists on making embroidered folk suits. <laughs> 
today, her two grandsons will come back home. She gets up early in the morning to begin preparations for her younger grandson's birthday. The whole family will have dinner together to celebrate. Li Guifeng takes out the Yao suits and asks her grandsons to try them on. They have not worn Yao clothes for a long time and look a little awkward in them. But they are still happy to take pictures of each other in their traditional clothes. Traditional Yao costumes may be becoming less relevant to young people's lives, but that does not mean they are disappearing. The embroidery patterns on the Yao costumes are not only an expression of folk culture, but also of the love between family members. Like a mother's love, it is always there protecting the Yao people. These traditional Chinese crafts, created and developed by women, have become a symbol of their gentleness and diligence. These qualities can be seen in everything from the time-honoured palazzi to historical painting scrolls. It is an expression of their joy and of a thriving culture. Today, traditional Chinese crafts are going through artistic and cultural changes. Each new life they encounter makes them shine brighter with new beauty.